I'm I watched I watched a couple of them. So the, the we're just gonna get a suggestion and do a a short scene. Was there any other? I'm trying to remember if there's any other device that we play with. Is there anything no. else? No, you could do you could do anything. As a matter of fact, if if you want, like we we've been doing a lot of real time. Like, yeah. But I mean, you could do you could do whatever if you want to jump around. However, you, I mean, this is just a chance to play and like however you like to play. Let's do that. Yeah, it's just like a free play, just like a little time for free play. That's cool. I I wonder. I may yeah, because in my in my podcast we do a lot of like meanwhile da 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 da. So like maybe I'll do some throw some edits in, but other maybe not. We'll we'll see what happens. Whatever, man. I'm down for whatever. I've done one, uh, and we might have done like in ten minutes. We might have done like twelve different characters. But oh no. <laughs> well, it was the guy I was playing with was definitely like very wonderfully hyper and bouncing around and so i was like at the end of that i was like ah, ah, okay uh that was great uh but i was definitely a lot uh, pretty tired from the movement so however you want to play it basically well cool. let's see yeah we'll see where we we'll see where we end up and you pulled the suggestion i didn't look at the rest of that post i okay. saw it but i but i didn't look at them is that what you pulled the, su the suggestion from that list well give or give me a number it? between one and 42 42 oh my gosh uh 142 uh th uh 37 <laughs> all right here we go 37 all right so 40 let's see 42 41 40 Okay, so this comes from Jay Gregory, uh great uh fun improviser and our suggestion is baby shots. Ba baby shots. Baby shots okay thanks jay yeah thank you thank you jay all right hmm. yeah it's just when they when they just really you know when they really scream it gets it's too much it's i don't, I don't know I don't know if I am in the right line of you. You feel this, right? That it's I'm, just I'm. It's piercing my ear, and somebody's got to go back in there, and I am like, I can't, I can't cause that little creature any more pain. But I, so this, I'm with you. This isn't its fault that it no, needs no. this regimen of. So look at all these. I've we still have five to go. There's so there's so many, and like. I'm with you. I cannot, I can't deal with it, honestly. But John, what, what should we, what do we, what do we, how do we hold ourselves together? Because they want us to be calm. Doc, I'm Dr. Doc. Yeah. You saw that the video where the guy just like danced and did a little dance and the baby was like, well, I feel inadequate. Yeah. I mean, I've, I'll be honest. I've tried everything and that's why I called you in. I was like, <sighs> I, I got no more tricks up my sleeve. Like I even tried, you know, I'm into hand, sleight of hand magic. I mean, that's my thing. I tried. I, I, that show is really good. I got to say you, you brought my, my, my girl's birthday party just down. They were rolling around. No idea where that card went. It came from. Thank you. Thank, thank you. And I thought, well, you know, everybody loves magic. And, and, and that was my pun intended ace up my sleeve. I'm like, if anything goes wrong, I'm going to pull out some magic. But my ears are, I mean, it hurts. It's so much, and I don't know what else to do. That's why I'm like, you, if you have any idea, I think now's the time to try it. Okay. I didn't want to, I didn't want to do this, but yeah. I yeah. have this thought. Yeah. I have ear protection. And I was thinking, we put these on you. I'll wait out here in case anything goes wrong. I only oh. got the one pair. Then... You're going to make the parents hold the kid down. So they have to participate. No longer just like putting it off on you. And you just go in screaming and just bam, bam, bam. And, yeah. and maybe also then they'll appreciate you more than they, they have been. I mean, first off, why would you have more than one pair of, of earplugs? I mean, that's brilliant. Second off, I think this plan is great because we have to work in conjunction. Here, give me, give me those. Give me the earplugs. Yeah. Here you go. All right, there you go. There you go. Yeah, just really squeeze them in there. Yep, that's good. Let them fill up. I'll be right, but can you hear me? I, yep. Can you, you can uh, hear me? Yeah, they're not canceling. Yes, uh, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. 
I will be right back. From in the room comes the most tumultuous of cries. There is a roaring, a fighting. Oh, you hear that? That was incredible. Oh, How God. did she get? Oh my God. Oh, you, oh, you, oh, you're crying. Okay. Oh, it's all right. Deeper breaths, John, deeper breaths. I didn't, I didn't know what was going to happen in there. No, it's, she, the child has lungs. She's got <gasps> force. I mean, I want to, part of me is like, I think that tyrants should, should just stop making noise. But then part of me is like, you know, am I damaging that child's inner creativity by asking it? You, you don't ask a bird not to sing. How can I ask this child not? Uh, I think, I feel like there's more. Can, can you hear me now? Because the screams are very loud. It's very, very loud. I hear you. Okay. I, I can hear you. It's it's a lot, um, but you know, let's just let's just here walk down the hallway with me. Walk okay. down the hallway. I want you to come into my office. I have a sort of nuclear option for okay. these moments. You know, I've been doing this many years, and uh, he opens the door to his office, and it's you know. Wait, wait, wait! This is your office? Yes. Just look. These uh, you can see these are my these are my books from way back in the day. You can see there. You know, we've got got many years of medical histories and oddities. He reaches up to one of the books on the shelf and sort of cocks it off and a, a door slides open. This, this is the last resort. Here, yeah, yeah you hold it, there you go. Well, I wanna go through that door. It, there's not much room past this first trophy, but sure, come on in, come on in, squeeze on in. Yeah, it's, yeah, okay, all right, yeah. Uh, uh, you, you can see I've got, yep, little, little, um, you know, prescription pads over here. But the main, the main thing is really what's on that, that, that showcase there that you're holding in your hands. <laughs> there is a lot of wood. <laughs> I am a connoisseur, actually. I've, I've gone to many different forests. Yeah. It's cedar. Yeah. It's cedar. You're right. Yep. Yep. I, uh, got that one myself and I, uh, I wood paneled it actually. It's a, it's a sort of a hobby of mine. Like your magic, I you know, have considered going into woodworking. Can I tell you what, my friend, you are in woodworking. You don't have to go into woodworking. I mean, can you hear me? Because this muffles the sound wonderfully. Can you, you should bring the kid in here. We should, br we should bring the kid in here. And then their cries will not be heard by no one else. Thank you. And we'll be yes. doing our job as physicians is muffling the cries and tears of people. Absolutely, nothing shall ever be heard again. We'll put put her in here. Shots, shut the door. Great. Yes, I I hear you. I'm sorry, I can't get over this office. This office is trim. I mean, I like how it's decorated. Mm. I like your style. I mean, I I will be honest with you. I didn't really know a lot about you outside of professionally, and I'm going through a thing now in my life where, you know, I don't want people to just know me as a doctor. I want to be known as other things. And I'm like, what would people think about me if I passed away? Are they going to stand up there and say, "Hey, he's a great, you know, um, a pediatrician," or are they going to get up there and say some of the things I do that aren't defined by my job? We never see where the card's coming from with John. That's what I'd say. A man of incredible, just, wow. I mean, your sleight of hand is, I, again, my daughter talks about it all the time. Really, wow. that's what I'd say. Wow, that's, wow, thank you. Of course. It's unbelievable. You're, you're, heals the sick oh. and, you know, I yeah. could never do that. I could never do that. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, the book, well, uh, <laughs> we, we got away from, what were you gonna? <laughs> The book. I feel like okay, I get open. distracted here. The book is very important to this. Open. Okay. Just let it sort of fall I mean, open to the center. Yeah. It's. It, I mean, it's. It, it's we've got it, lots of medical history going into this. I mean, it is leather bound. You know, they don't. The last leather bound book I remember is is. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm my thesis. But besides, anyway, um, this is beautiful. This is some nice. Le Whoa. Mm -hmm. Right there. Wow. That's it. That's it, John. Wow. This is incredible. You're going to set that down in front of little Madison. Okay, be right back. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 
the the room. He heads into the room, but it gets it grows quiet. There is silence from within the room where Madison was getting her shots. John emerges and walks down the hallway and returns. I should get some coffee. I mean, I'm gonna grab a cup. He heads to the coffee pot and the coffee pours perfectly. Does Dr. Friedman want coffee as well? I'm, I'm gonna bring him some. I'm gonna bring him, bring him some coffee or he needs some as well. <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, you're back. How did it go? Oh, oh, thank you. This is, oh, that's so wonderful. Thank you so much. This it, is great. You, she, you always know. She instantly stopped crying. Wow. I, I haven't used that book in many years, but the, its powers are incredible. It almost makes me feel like, you know, all my years of, of learning, all of your years of sleight of hand, of trickery, and our forefathers set down in a book some, some wonderful coloring pages. And that's, that's what really does it. I mean, what are, what are we doing? I know what I'm doing. I'm changing my life right now. Yeah, I'm sitting here. I'm looking at the most talented magician Get out in here. the county area. And we're sitting in a beautiful wood paneled office drinking incredible coffee. We, we have other callings, John. Uh, hey, uh, Brian? Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Anything. For you, anything. Go, go, yes. Is this your card? <gasps> From my coffee cup? See, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Paul, that was so fun. That man. was I lovely. Love, I love that you just will go with it. I mean, it just makes it like anything's possible. Is that something that you've always, when you when you improvise, do you always feel like that? Where it's like, yeah, this is an adventure. Let's go down. Because you don't ever yeah. seem to be somebody who's thrown by anything in a scene. I mean, I guess, so there are, there are two things that I would say. One is that I came to improv because I was like, I was very bound up in myself. So I wasn't like looking for like more constraints. Like there was this, I have this imagination that that can fit into these things and everything is so lovely and fun to follow behind every door. Usually my problem is like, how do I, how do I narrow this down, right? Like, because you eventually need to, you got to find that moment of like, is this your card? Like that was such a lovely recalculate or like reincorporation of this magic trick. Oh, you're the best magic. And then like, oh, it's, and that's, that's often something that I actually struggle to find because everything is like, ooh, this is what's over here, right? And we could go anywhere down that way. But that's what I needed, especially as a kid and still often need this, like, I just enjoy like, yes, the imaginative engine. Let's yeah. let's verify that it's good and follow it, which is what I like. I mean, a lot. it's it, it's so much easier to go. Oh, it's it, raining it in. That's easier, you know. <laughs> Having people who go open up the imagination, like you are told for years not to do that, and so to get people to unlock that and open up their imagination, I think that's a harder ask of people rather than like, oh, okay, we, 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 we can we can eventually bring this in, but like yeah. opening it up, no way. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's, it's also quite funny how once you've opened a lot of things, eventually your brain starts going like, oh, this is, oh, yep, 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 and there, right? Like your brain sort of does it for you eventually. And as long as you can just like lay off of it and get everything in the pot, then all of a sudden here, this is your card. <laughs> Well, I think your brain naturally recognizes recognizes patterns. Like I think yes. it definitely does that. And when you're not putting the pressure on yourself, for some reason we put pressure on ourselves in these improv scenarios. Like I think it's we want them to go well, so we feel mm -hmm. that pressure. But if if we can get us if we can get our, our brains and our bodies in the sense of being relaxed, then we're open for things to happen. And then those things appear, but they 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 don't appear as much if you're if you're holding on. And, and like something's got to happen, you know? Agreed. I, yeah, I think it's, it's part of the reason that I enjoy doing improv is it's sort of like, it's like, I trust that there, there will be connections. Yeah. That uh, we will find them later. 
And that trust is important to have, I yeah. guess. And that's why it's so, it's so liberating and why we can improvise. Because if we weren't good at making connections, we wouldn't be able to improvise. We would have to write it all out or plan it ahead of time. Yeah. But we can just like, this idea leads to this. And then, you know, we start to build this, this relationship of like these, those two people who are doing the wrong job. <laughs> and like having, uh, what I love is you're making a choice too. And that seemed to be like, they're still good at what they do. It's not like yeah. you got to get out of here because we're bad. It's like, no, there might be another calling and, and using, you know, using this information that your partner sets out to be like, that's, let's not get past that. That seems like a fun thing to explore. So let's see how far we could take this idea. And I think it's so much more, interesting to play these characters also with empathy where it's like yeah. we're not mad at the kid for crying we just don't know what to do yeah <laughs> we're just, I, you had that great line like you don't you don't stop a bird from singing <laughs> it's like of course it's like well, the, that was so lovely i i and thank you i think of that all the time as a parent myself i've got a five and seven year old and, and i'm always like is this the is this the line I'm going to say to them right now that later on in therapy they're going to explore? They're like, you told me when I was five I couldn't X Y Z. So I'm always very self aware of like, mm. what am I asking them? I, am I telling them not to do something because of safety, or it's like, okay. yeah, don't run into traffic, or am I saying it because of some other reason? Like, will that would I be embarrassed? Like, what's the real reason? So looking at that, and and I remember hearing somebody say, you know, uh, there's this was some analogy of like, uh, a guy picked up a snake, it bit him, because he had to move the snake somewhere. And I'm butchering this for sure. But he picked up and then, and then they're like, why did you kill the snake? Why did you continue to pick it up? And it's like, well, I had to move it. But the snake doesn't know to do different. That's what a snake does. And so I'm not mad at the snake for doing that. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and, and that's a very butchered uh, uh, analogy of what it was. But that was the gist I got was like, you know, the, the kids are going to make noise and, and you have to go with that and go, all right, it just is what it is. How do we react to it? Yeah. I had a friend the other day say something along these lines, which was like, we often in those situations when we would say like, we, you know, just don't do this. Or, or I think it's often usually loaded with like, how could you have done this? Yeah. 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 And it's because we don't know how to relate to ourselves, like to our own mistakes or the own things that happen in our lives. And we put that on them. And we're usually also always saying, I wouldn't do it this way or ah, that <laughs> yes. like yes. it's. And so if we can get past that, we can start to be like, oh, like that's, a, this is an interesting choice. This is an interesting desire. You want to do this? Like, okay. And then you can see it and respond to it very differently yeah oh i think that's great because you're making that you're turning it into something positive too right you're you're turning away from and i think as a you know as as teachers of improv to say to we have a challenge that students are trying at times to like do what we think should be done and it's like it's not what i think should be done i have very i have a limited imagination as far as in these situations but if you can do what you think can be done and i can help you get make it easier i think that's the goal yeah. Yeah. To find a way that it's easier. Definitely. Dude, that's my, that's my whole goal at improv now is like, that's why I love doing scenes in restaurants. Cause I can sit down. Like I used to <laughs> kind of just like, can we be in a cab or something? I just, but it is, it is a sense of like, this is play and what can make that play easier. And, and as you yeah. continue to, you know, this pandemic, one of the silver linings for improv is you can find those people now who play the way you like to play. So you, you are not restricted by like geography and like, yeah. or, or a class situation where you got to play with anybody who has a check. Now it's like, no, no, yeah. no, be active, go out there. And when you're ready, find those people. And they are out there who you go, oh, we like playing together. So if it's, if it's people who like doing quick improv, find them. If it's people who like doing narrative, find them. If, it's, if it's people who like doing positive or if it's people who like being, you know, I don't like being condescending or negative, but there are enough improvisers who do. So if you want like that, that, you'll <laughs> find them. Want, they both want to condescend and be condescended too. And that is their complex. And that's great. They can find their little happy places here on the internet. <laughs> right? I mean, Jesus. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and what, how did you get, let me ask you this. How did you get into improv? What brought you, how'd you get started? Okay, so it started in high school, but it was because I like stumbled into a, a production of Twelfth Night where the director's idea in order to make it all fit was that the the people who were like the ensemble were playing 
all the all the scenery so all the benches all the chairs and and like most of the props so but we there was no script we just had to like make up stuff to fit around this <laughs> like it was just like yeah yeah yeah. you have to he's gonna add, you're gonna be his bench great be his bench and, and like okay. these these things that would come around and it's like and you take care of any props that get left on the stage and find a way to do it in character and like and so i got into that and discovered this sort of fun of like oh i'm and he so he's being into commedia dell'arte Okay. And so we were Zanis, but without like, so we were like sort of playing our little games and Lotsies. And eventually I ended up running the little theater like guild that they have there and like t hosting improv workshops each week. Wow. And we would write plays and we would do 24 hour plays. Um, in college, what was funny then is what happened. I went on this, this sort of disc this discursive loop where I went into college and I met the, the, the people I'm not quite as pumped to do improv with who are like, you know, they're trying to do whose line it is anyway. Like they really yeah. want to do that. And so I like ended up more in acting and more in like mm -hmm. viewpoints and devising and stuff. And I'm still in that world. I'm, ta I'm taking workshops and classes right now in that. Um, but then when I was, uh, the, the person who introduced me to you, uh, Kurt. Yes, Mabry. Kurt, yeah. yeah, Kurt Mabry, that's it. I, I always forget if there's like a little U in them. Anyway, Kurt Mabry, he, uh, he runs in Shanghai, ZMAC, or in yes. ZMAC and in Bangkok as well. And I was teaching theater to people and they wanted like pageants and this and da, da, da. and it wasn't working the students didn't like it i started doing improv and also met them at the same time in shanghai and was like oh this is what i like wow. i like this and i like got really into that i like adjusted what i was teaching now i'm back in the united states and i'm teaching improv again more and and doing more workshops and devising and stuff so i've done this long big loop of both like theater and improv and that's how i that's how I came to it and where I am now. <laughs> and, and and where, like, are you located geog geographically? Where are you? in the? I identify as a Philadelphia-based person. Oh. No, I'm, I'm outside. Of, I'm a little bit outside of Philadelphia. So, oh. and eventually I'll move into Philadelphia itself proper. I'm still on the on-ramp back in. It's a hard year to move. Why? What's going on? <laughs> oh, I, 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 <laughs> Dude, for sure. It's like... Like this is definitely, I feel like we are, we might be coming out of it and there's some positive things happening, but definitely it's not, there's no need to rush anywhere, right? <laughs> yes, there you go. Way there's, down the line. Oh, I see hope. <laughs> it's hope, hope's here and it's a, it's a big thing and it's a matter of just surviving. That's the big thing now is just survive in advance, survive in advance and, and having someone with your also background in like we we there's a small subset of people with Comedia dell'arte um training which i think you know we do uh owe a debt of gratitude because that's where it all comes from and if people can start learning more about that then you can have that into your tool belt as well and talking about like the archetypes and how you're presenting and things like that and so having you now back in and, and have that background plus your background of acting melding together uh i think i think that's great and you're you're also i'm excited because you're doing a podcast as well and you've been doing like a narrative podcast i mean is it yes. what you say narrative it, it definitely is narrative because I have found that, especially because it's it's mostly distributed through audio. It's all, yeah. We've also made it available on YouTube, but it's just like the, it's the Zoom recording with the audio podcast track beneath it. Yeah. I found, I was listening to audio podcasts and I was like, or improvised podcasts. And I was like, oh, I would love to see this in person because I would be following the people, but listening yeah. to it, I have no idea what's going on. And so I was, I was realizing there is this way of like using a narrative to help a listener follow what's happening, which just, totally. I think, lets you have a bit more fun with the characters and stuff. Totally. So, yeah. So it's a narrative podcast and it's it's been a lot of fun. I've sort of invented my own little game that like, as long as we follow, it's, it, you know, like all, all games eventually get made. It's like, so that we can accomplish this goal, we're just yeah. gonna like have this little form. And it's been very fun to tweak it and to have something to like tweak and work on over the pandemic has been a big help. <laughs> so. and, and, and for sure, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> Having a narrative to follow sometimes would benefit a lot of improv. Yeah, it because it just makes it pay off nicer. It like helps the listener go like, oh, then okay, yeah, it's you know, it, I don't know what it is. It's narrative has a certain I, fun and power. It's humans are storytellers for centuries, and and we tell stories and we pass story like we're born storytellers, and that's how information gets passed. And and not that everything has to to put the narrative first, but definitely having a narrative helps because there's also, like you said, there's a payoff. And a lot of times in improv, it's like, here's this big setup, and then we never get the payoff. And it's like, well, where's the, like, the everyone's waiting for the payoff. It sounded like a great idea, but then we we go on these other tangents. So, um, yeah. so where, where can people, if they want to listen to it, it's on iTunes. 
Yes, it's on iTunes, it's on Spotify, it's on, some of it's on YouTube. I'm still working on learning how to be a video editor, but some of it's there as well. Um, you can find all the links to these various things at our website, which is theoffercast.com. Um, cool. And uh, I'm, I'm indebted to Caesar who came on this, was it just last week? <laughs> we, we were given any window of time to pick and we picked like the two weeks right next to each other, <laughs> which is just funny. But um, so yeah, the, uh, Caesar is my co-host and we bring on a guest each week and we're working on branching out and bringing in new guests and playing wonderful, great stories. And it's a lot of fun. So yeah, you can find it anywhere you get podcasts. And it's great. Yeah, Caesar was on last week and, and both you and he were suggested by Kurt Mabry who said like, Hey, and, and I'm, I'm a big fan of like, oh, I like playing with people I've never played with before and kind of getting up there and being like, let's see how this is going to work. And I think both you and him both, I'm like, I'm so thankful for Kurt for doing that because it's like, oh, it was, it was so great. And, and, and whether, whether it's another virtual situation or in person, uh, I can't wait to play with you again, man. You were so fun. Thank you so you much. You are also so fun. I'm so grateful to you and for Kurt for linking us up, but I'm really grateful to you for having this little fun little space that we can leaf out, not knowing what's, not knowing each other. And we just make a short little thing and it's really beautiful. So thanks for, thanks for adding this little bit of beauty to the world. Oh, oh Paul, thank you so much. And welcome back to the States, buddy. <laughs> thanks. It's uh, everything's great here. It's a great time. Everything's, it's fun. What a beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful USA. Yeah, if only the fun will start. Uh, take care, my friend. I'll talk to you. <laughs>